Hi Taurus, welcome to your mid-January 2020 general love reading. This is Mermaid Scales Tarot. Taurus, I hope you guys have had a great start to your 2020. I hope with the full moon in Cancer, with that eclipse, you guys were able to clear out negative behaviors, people, situations. I know I have. It's been very eye-opening for me. So I hope you guys have been doing well. Thank you so much for all your love and support. By the way, Taurus, I am selling my crystal sets at my online store as well as my handmade zodiac candles where I intuitively chose the scents and the smells that I believe all zodiac signs will resonate with. So if you're interested in making a purchase for yourself or someone that you love, go ahead and check out my online shop where you'll find that in the description box of this video. Alright Taurus, let's get started. This is a general love reading for the sun, moon, rising, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and or stellium of Taurus. This is not going to resonate with every Taurus that listens to this message. Messages are said for those who need to hear them, and that's how my guides and my intuition prioritizes the messages that I provide during these readings. If this doesn't resonate with you, Taurus, I suggest checking your other signs in different placements, because depending on the planetary aspects in the sky, those signs may resonate with you more at this time than your sun sign does. Hi cross watchers, you're very welcome here if you're interested in a Taurus, who wouldn't be? I do have to say, Taurus and cross watchers, that I'm picking up on both energies. So if I'm explaining a certain situation where you feel like the roles should be flipped or reversed, please feel free to go ahead and do that at your own discretion should you feel like that resonates with your situation the most. Finally, we all have divine masculine and feminine energies within each and every one of us. If at all during this reading you hear me say feminine or masculine, please know that I'm um, referring to the energies, not the gender or the sex. If anything is gender or sex specific, I will let you know. Alright Taurus, let's get started. I do have to say, I don't know, I get this energy that someone out there, it's not going to be for everyone obviously, but like from the person you're romantically connected with or maybe even energetically connected with, I feel like they recently sent you a meme or a message or a post through the internet that just was really funny, made you crack up, and it was like an inside joke between the two of you. I don't know, I, I definitely got that energy for someone out there, but again, that's not for everyone. So Taurus, this is going to be a spread in regards to whoever you're connected with romantically or energetically. I'm going to ask the questions about how they feel about you at this time, what they think about you, what they like about you and what they don't like about you, what they like about the connection they have with you and what they don't like about it, and their highest hopes and deepest fears moving forward with this connection. All right. Wow, some of you are definitely dealing with an earth sign, another Taurus maybe, or a Capricorn, or a Virgo, Leo's in the house as well, oof, wow, okay, Taurus, we have the moon as the background energy, this is Pisces energy, could also be Cancer for me as a reader, since the moon is ruled by Cancer. You could be dealing with a Pisces or a Cancer. You can have that somewhere in your chart, but it doesn't have to be the case. I feel like there's some sort of confusion surrounding where this is going within the connection between the two of you, Taurus. This person really has no clue. I'm not really sure if it's the case that they don't know how you feel, Taurus, or they just... I almost feel like this is an on-again, off-again connection. There's something that keeps you guys so energetically, psychically connected with each other. It's almost as if you can't let each other go. But at the same time, there's times when you, quite, quite honestly, I do see the tower on the spread and 
I'm really getting mostly with that. There's like arguments, fights, disagreements. But something still keeps you guys still longing for one another. And so I feel like Taurus, they're trying to still figure out exactly what this means to them. Why is this so strong? Why is this chemistry, this bond inseparable almost? They try to disassociate themselves from you. They try to just move on with their lives in the time that you guys are not communicating with each other. But they're almost haunted by the fact of how strongly they feel towards you. And it's kind of inexplainable. They're just always thinking about you. Always, even some may even go as far as dream about you, Taurus. You guys may communicate in your dreams together. I'm also getting a sense that you've lately been getting messages from this person at night, maybe? Late at night? And it's like, I'm also getting an energy that someone's like sending messages, like drunk messages. Let's go ahead and clarify the moon. Why is the moon in the background energy for Taurus? Judgment. Ooh. Someone wants a second chance. Someone wants to revive this connection between the two of you because they feel called to it. They feel, again, this inseparable connection with you, Taurus. And I'm almost hearing a wake-up call, a severe wake-up call. If you guys are on that period where you aren't talking to each other, it it's really gotten them, quite honestly, a bit shook. It's, it's really making them think a lot. But there's also a lot of fears and anxieties around this. And I don't, I, I almost feel like they're almost afraid that you're completely over this. I'm gonna get another card. Ooh, those two wanna come out. The Ace of Cups and the Page of Pentacles. Yeah, Taurus, this person still has a lot of love for you. They do. With the Ace of Cups and the Page of Pentacles in Judgment, they feel called to reach out to you again, to restart this love. But I feel this energy that you guys are just tired of this on again, off again. It's draining. And they know it is with Judgment. They know that if they don't really make the effort again this time around or to really make it something that's tangible, worthwhile, then it's, it's a done deal. And that's what scares them. It's almost as if they feel like even if you guys were to never talk again, even if you guys were to separate, go on your different paths, They'll still always have love for you. They'll always love you. I'm hearing that song by Whitney Houston. I will always love you. I don't know if that's going to resonate with someone. But in some case, I'm looking at this page of pentacles, right? And he's offering this pentacle to this gnome or whatever it is, wood elf, elf, I don't know. And those are like myth mystical creatures, right? Like they're... I mean, I don't know, hell, they could be real somewhere in this earth or somewhere in another dimension, but overall we never see them or hear them. And I almost feel like they think that this is just like a dream, to that this would actually work out or that you would actually give them a chance as more of a fantasy that they're trying to bring into the 3D than what is really here. And again, this is just all in the background, in the subconscious, in their mind, in their head. I almost feel like Taurus, they didn't realize how strongly they were going to fall for you. And I do feel like there's some sort of soul contract here. Especially with judgment appearing twice. Like there was a karmic contract or a soul contract that you two, before being incarnated in this life, had to fulfill with one another. And whether this is the person you're going to stay with for the rest of your life or if you guys have learned your lessons and moved on, that's different for each and every one of you. How they feel about you is the Two of Pentacles. I'm just getting this sense of chaos. Like, they have so much on their plate right now. 
I think they're really working hard right now. I mean, the holidays are over, work is back to work. Um, this person does work very hard. They could be in, um, I'm hearing like the bank or something with money, money exchange, money um, investment, investment planning, financial planning. It doesn't have to be. But I'm also getting the sense, Taurus, that it's always, they feel like this up and down feeling for you. And it depends on where you guys are at this, at the connection. Like if things are good, they're feeling really, really good. But the second there's a disagreement, the second something goes bad, then it's almost as if they're like, oh, well, I don't know if this is going to work out. I'm just going to separate. And if this one or both of you need to realize that there's always going to be bumps in the road. Nothing is ever smooth sailing as much as we like it to be. Um, and of course, I'm not saying stick through toxic, narcissistic, abusive behavior. I don't think any reader would ever recommend that. So if you're going through that, then obviously dump this person. But for the majority of you of what I'm feeling this is, it's like this person just wants... They're kind of picky in a sense, Taurus, and you're exactly their type, almost to the T. Like everything they like in a person, physically, intellectually, you check it off, check, check, check. Um, some of you guys have really great hair, really great skin. Um, that's what I'm picking up from this. And someone has like a really sexy like stubble or like um, they're growing out their beard or like they have stubble on their face that's like kind of sexy. Um, again, not for everyone. But they just don't know how this is going to work out. But even if they don't know how this is going to work out, it's almost as if if you're down, Taurus, then they'll be down. But if, you know... It keeps on going back and forth. They want to figure out a plan. I think it's just how do we ground this? How do we make it stable? I, I want to go ahead and clarify the two pentacles as well. I'm also getting someone could uh, spend a bit of money, like overspending. There's been arguments about like purchasing too much when you can't afford it or something like that but not for everyone. Why is the Two of Pentacles here? Yeah, they want everything to work out. And then we have the King of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck. More Earth energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Someone has a hell of a lot of char uh, Earth in their chart. They do want this to work out. Three of Wands, Fire Energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. But I'm also getting the sense to... Taurus that they want to reach out to you they want they're definitely sending energetic messages um they're sending their energy your way but I do feel like they're still waiting for you to reciprocate that energy or to even reach out to them and I do feel like a lot of them stare at their phone wanting to reach out to you wanting to text you but then it's just like backing out again because is Taurus going to accept this? Is Taurus going to... It's just like a merry-go-round for some of you. Like, almost a cycle. And it's like, is this going to make it or break it? And I think a lot of you are on this period of you're done taking the same merry-go-round over and over again. And this person's very well aware of it. And I do have to say, because we have the Eight of Pentacles is what they think about you or think about this relationship, they do want to put the work in. I think they're done doing a half-assed job, which I feel like a lot of you feel like they're doing. And I also get that they're stressed a lot, stressed about work, stressed about what's going on in their lives, maybe certain projects they're involved with. Honestly, this could be someone that you even work with, Taurus. Maybe you guys work in the same department, the same project. I'm 
I'm also getting a sense that someone's definitely like stayed at a hotel with this person. Or maybe they're going to invite you to a hotel or get a hotel somewhere. But they really want to start putting the effort in. I think they're realizing that they haven't been. Or that they've been putting too much effort in their career or they've been putting too much effort in something else. But now they want to focus on you. They want to zero in on you. But they don't know how you feel about it. They don't know if you're down to start this again. Or just keep it going for those of you that are still connected. I'm also getting a sense that someone has like plaid pajama bottoms. I don't know why that's so random. Um, or like flannel pajama top or like that texture you know the pajama bottoms type of thing that's going to resonate with someone out there but they want to put the work in but if you want to put the work in then put the damn work in it's like this person just wants and again it could be vice versa but it's like this person is like more daydreaming fantasizing with the moon about what they want to do what their ideal is and they're just having trouble with grounding it with putting it into action, into motion. But I do feel like there has been a couple conflicts and a couple fights, Taurus. Because, interestingly enough though, what they like about you is the tower. Mars energy. You could have Aries or Scorpio somewhere in your chart. You could be an Aries, Taurus, Cusper, or you could be involved with one of those signs. You don't put up with no bullshit. The moment you see bullshit, all that's coming down. They like that you're a strong person and that you do what needs to be done. If something's not working, you're not going to put any more effort into it. If something is failing, you'll let it fall because you know that you're not going to build up on something that doesn't work or isn't built on a firm foundation. I'm getting someone could be an architect or like an interior designer or someone's thinking about doing renovations to their home. I'm also getting the sense that you're very, very real in the way that if this person is annoying you, you don't sidestep it, you tell them what's up. Like, I don't know, there's like a habit that they do, whether it's like chewing their gum really loudly or biting their nails and it just like pisses you off or they like slouch when they sit, but it's like you tell them to like, fix it so they can get better for themselves so they can you know it's like one of those things but really what I'm getting for most of you is that you don't pull up put up with any shit any shit and you call it out you don't just let people keep on coming by you know with some fake shit or um saying something that just doesn't feel right to you you're very real and you'll shake things up should things need to be shaken up. And they find that attractive. It's like, oh, I'm almost hearing like they feel like you're one of the realest people they've ever met. What they don't like is the Eight of Wands. Interesting, because this is fire energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. This is usually like shooting for the stars, going for your goals, going for your aspirations. I almost feel like they think that, you know, they're not part of your plan anymore in some way. Others of you, you guys could travel quite frequently for your job, for your career. You're always on the go. And they're kind of more of wanting to be at home, Netflix and chill type of thing where you guys are just on the go, on to the next, next project, next plan, um, always out. Another thing that I am getting from this card is that you guys could be at a long distance from each other, whether that's, you know, in completely different countries, different states, or just a few hours from each other. They wish they lived closer to you because they almost feel like as if, if only you guys were closer you could just be together more often, talk things out, um, you know, just hang out a lot more where it doesn't feel like 
it could it could be part of the reason why this is always on and off right because it's just too damn far or like you guys can't always get in communication with each other there could be days where you guys aren't talking but it's like this person wants more but then it's like at the same time they want more but if they don't see that you're making the effort that they feel like you should be making then they want to be like oh all right well then i'm not going to do shit I'll cut off communication. It's just things need to be talked out. Things need to be said. I kind of want to clarify this Eight of Wands. Why is the Eight of Wands something that they don't like about Taurus? Page of Wands. With the High Priestess at the bottom of the deck, some of you definitely have fire in your chart, or you could also have um, Cancer or Pisces. I almost get the sense, Taurus, that may, they may not feel like you're very passionate about this connection, and that there's something that you withhold from saying that gives them that inspiration, that this really is something you feel too or that you have just as much passion for. It's almost as if they feel like you're keeping something under wraps, that you're keeping like this enthusiasm under wraps. But again, it could also be the fact that this is what you're expecting from them, more of a motivation, more of an inspiration, but instead they just wanna be more introverted. Um, not really, I I'm getting for some like, it's either way, it's either you Taurus or they, but it's like someone wants more passion and excitement in this that is just not being expressed, it's not being shown. But intuitively, it's it's felt and that's why this connection is just so strong. You know it's there, but it's like you're waiting for fireworks to happen and it's just a party popper, you know? It's kind of that feeling. What they like about this connection is the Queen of Cups. This is water energy, specifically Cancer, but it could also be Pisces or Scorpio. You could have that in your chart. You could be dealing with one of them. There is a lot of love here. As much as there is on and off, back and forth, up and down, side to side, whatever the hell, I feel like someone knows that either one or both have the potential to give their heart give their soul and I do feel like there is a time when you two really were like that you guys have had specifically I'm seeing like a very very specific moment where both of you one night or one day just let everything out on the table you talked about your past you talked about what made you you to this day in a very emotional way and that that was part of the um, bonding you two have together that makes this spiritual psychic connection so strong someone is definitely like when it is good when everything is like you guys are on good terms and whatever it's like someone really sees the romance the love the sensuality and someone's beautiful or very handsome and it's something about the eyes too something about the eyes And someone's like putting lotion on or just put lotion on before watching this video or like lotion on their hands or something like that. Getting all lotioned up. <laughs> um, but they do like it when the connection is completely open and the feelings are there. And I guess that's what keeps this connection somewhat bonded in some way because one or both of you know the feelings you have deep deep down deep down intuitively and it's been expressed before it's been shown before especially my feminines who are listening to this you're very caring very intuitive some of you could even be psychic natural abilities that gives a lot of healing or nurture nourishment to the other person
What they don't like about the connection is strength. This is interesting. The card of Leo. Some of you could be dealing with the Leo, or you have Leo in your chart. They may have Leo in their chart. It's it's that thing though about again about like holding back and letting completely go of all the fears, all the anxieties, all the pettiness that sometimes happens for some of you, and to just really let it all out, a hundred percent raw, real. Tell me, show me, fuck me the way that you feel deep in your heart. And don't hold back. Don't hold back out of pride. Even for some, this has a lot to do with pride, with ego. I want to go ahead and clarify this. Why is the strength card here? Really weirdly, I'm hearing tiger lilies. <laughs> I don't know. Um, maybe tiger lily is going to resonate with someone. Why is strength here and what they don't like about the connection? Ooh, seven of swords. Okay, with the ace of, eight of swords at the bottom of the deck. I feel like someone thinks someone's all in their head about the potential that someone is holding back, someone's withholding, someone's not saying because someone is trying to pull some sneaky shit that hasn't been caught yet, that hasn't been discovered yet, but there's something shady, something keeping someone in this Eight of Swords, what if, could if, should if, how, what, when. I'm also getting the sense looking at this, it's like, By holding back, by not saying how they feel, by not being honest about how they feel, it's only playing themselves at the end of the damn day. Look, they're walking right into a trap. And the trap is what keeps them in this energy. Someone could be incarcerated even by like something with like burglary, theft, fraud. That may resonate for someone out there. And so it's hard to kind of just wait and keep strong and hold it down when someone has like been incarcerated for a long time maybe. Could be seven, eight months or since August or July. Again, not for everyone. But really what I'm getting from most of you is that someone just feels like someone's holding back information, not speaking to their truth, not saying how they really feel, which is making someone feel like if you were only to tell me what is up, what is real here, then we can, I can free myself or you can help free me from the situation of overthinking. Someone could be dealing with an air sign, Gemini, Libra, or an Aquarius. The highest hopes for this connection is the Ace of Swords. Clarity, truth, communication. You know, I'm looking back at this too. It could be someone really, really wants to reach out to you. Someone does want to say something, but they know from their shady past or the things they've done in the past, it may just, it, it's caused them to already fail before they even tried, or that's what they feel like. But someone just wants clarity, someone just wants truth. Or even just the start of communication if you guys aren't talking at this time. What is the truth? How do you feel? There's a lot of confusion here, Taurus, and maybe it's the one you have to be the one to speak up, but you don't have to do anything, you know? Whatever you feel like you want this to be or how you want it to continue, that's up to you guys. It's all different here. But for the majority of you guys, I do feel like they just want to open up communication again. And I do feel like they will reach out. Maybe it would be closer to mid-February 
honestly I feel like a lot of you guys maybe around the time of Valentine's Day I don't know why I'm picking that up strongly you could be dealing with an Aquarius um but I'm also looking back on this two of Pentacles now they may think you have a lot of other options they may feel like you know what you're just they want to be the one that you choose but it's like they're not sure if you are with other people if you are just even looking to explore other options they just want to know first of all they want to cut out all other options i got to be honest i got to be real um they just want to talk again they want to open this up but again it's up to you taurus i really do feel like the ball's in your court but I get the sense it's like you're wanting Taurus and again vice versa whatever um someone wants someone to open up someone wants someone to be real when they've been a bit real and you can't always just wait for the open door for you to go through sometimes you have to open that door sometimes you have to make that opportunity for yourself I, al I almost just get the sense that someone out here is just always waiting for the other person to reach out, the other person to make amends, the other person to whatever. Out of this own sense of illusions, anxieties, insecurities of, okay, when they do it, then I'll feel better about it. Deepest fears is judgment. Taurus, I really feel like they're afraid that if they were to reach out, if they were to try to start communication, if they were trying to offer something new again, you'd have a whole lot to say to them, and it's not good. I almost feel like they're afraid that you're going to put them in their place or that you're just going to completely reject them. I almost feel like they're going to try to come in too, very like, just because this girl's kind of almost naked. Um very like seductively, very charismatically, and you're just be like, uh-uh, I know this game. I know this game. Final judgment is that we're through. We're done. My calling is somewhere else. My soulmate is somewhere else. It's not with you. And I'm just getting the sense that their biggest fear is rejection coming from you. The person that I feel like they'll always have some feelings for, they'll always have love for, they'll always have some sort of connection with. Alright Taurus, we're going to go ahead and take this to the extended reading. If you're interested in joining me to see the likely outcome and any advice for you guys going into February for love and romance, go ahead and check out the description box where you'll find the Vimeo link there. But before we go, Taurus, I will pull a Romance Angels card. I'm going to ask them to... Spirit, how does this person feel about Taurus? And what is their intentions with Taurus? And how do they feel about this connection? Whoo! Okay. Wedding with playfulness. Like, this combination for me is that like they've definitely daydreamed. And I said that before, even dreamt about one day marrying you or if it's not marriage just being the they always thought you were going to be the person forever even if you guys were to go through the worst times through the best times you guys would be the rock in their lives that you'll always be there there's definitely some fantasy here going on especially with playfulness And I'm definitely getting this energy that there's a feminine energy that's very like, very sweet, kind, playful, lighthearted, that the masculine definitely misses. But the masculine didn't know how to respond to that, that lightheartedness that they almost saw you as a very pure, a pure light that they didn't just know how to handle. Some of you, I gotta be honest, they may be thinking of proposing out of the blue. Um, and you could even have been married to this person. Maybe your marriage is just going in a bit of a 
rockiness right now that they want to just bring light back into the situation or they just want to recommit to you Taurus it's all different for you guys but you'll know what it means if this reading resonates with you all right Taurus that was your reading I really hope you enjoyed it again if you like to see the likely outcome and any advice for you guys going into February go ahead and check out the description box where you'll find the Vimeo link Again, if you're interested in purchasing a crystal set for yourself or a candle for someone that you love, go ahead and check out the description box as well where you'll see my online store. If this is where we depart, Taurus, I love you guys. If this resonated with you, please comment, like, share, and subscribe. I wish you all the best, Taurus, and I'll see you next time. Take care.